Okay, so here's something about uh, liquid cooling on the Chevy Volt battery pack. Um, I got a piece I was putting together and I thought, aha, I'll just loop the two ends together. That way the coolant can just shoot through, come through, and then go back the other way to circulate coolant. Um, and somebody on a social media pointed out to me, no, you don't want to do that. Uh, the flow actually goes through the batteries and then back and I'm like what because when you just look on the end of a section there's really nothing to show that so I took a look at a different block this was uh, one of the small loose sections right here and when you look at the end of it it's just you know it's 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 an end plate nothing to it um, we've got these brass inserts where the threaded rods go through and, uh, you know, squeeze all this together. And you can look straight through here. Let's lower the camera for that. So here's the port on one side, and you can literally look straight through there. It's, uh, it's just a straight shot. Um, but since the bigger section of pack I'm working with, um, I was just trying to keep it from all fall falling apart. This little short part... I can take this whole thing apart so we can have a better look at it. So keeping in mind this is sideways, this is the bottom of the battery pack here. Um, the top is kind of um, held together with some plastic uh, rivets or plastic welding, uh, but the bottom is loose without these threaded rods. And by opening this up, I can actually pull out a cooling plate. And isn't that cool looking? Look at that. It's little tiny tubes, but you're like, what? That's weird because it looks like they don't go through here, but they circulate through. But then if you flip it over, it's, uh, it's the opposite. So it looks like this is really designed for coolant going one direction through and back out the other. Um, it's just aluminum. Those channels look tiny, though. Absolutely tiny. I don't know how good we can get our focus here. So right on the end, that's open. Those are little tiny input or output channels right there. I have no idea what the flow rate would this, this would be because it's... I mean, they're just little, little, little. So when these are all stacked up, you've got a channel going this way and a channel going this way but it appears the coolant goes through like that crazy because the whole battery pack reply relies on basically a zillion o-rings to not leak i mean i love the you know how how well taken care of chevy volt batteries are but i can see why leaks can uh, potentially be a an issue here so anyways that's uh pretty cool and complicated and crazy all at the same time so I'm going to put this back in. So really um, all I was using this for was just some kind of quick pressure testing so I could uh, blow in one end and feel air coming out the other or um, put my thumb over it feel that it, it was sealed up pretty good. Um, but for proper coolant flow we actually need the flow to be going through the battery. So I've got here um, these, this is a little kit of uh, silicone corks, like for painting, powder coating, that sort of thing, where you can uh, stick it in a hole, keep your uh, threads from getting painted, that sort of thing. And the large size here looks like it's actually a pretty good fit. So I'm going to put these in here just to close this up, and then I can get a sense of airflow through the battery pack just from the one end. So since the other end is now corked up, fluid should move sideways through the pack. So I'm gonna put some air pressure on the other connector and see what we get here. I'm gonna block it and apply pressure and then release it. Sure enough, we even uh, blew some coolant out of there. Wow, more than I thought actually.
I would have grabbed a bucket instead of a paper towel. And I do need something solid as a base to bolt the battery to and handle it. So I'm going to cut off a 30 inch chunk here of the original Volt uh, battery pack uh, big metal tray. And I think this just still has a little plastic under it. Ah, it looked like there was still two nuts that were never undone here. Okay, let's see if we can fit this on here. I basically just set this section of battery onto the piece of steel plate that I cut off. Um, I made sure to hook the backside in under that little lip that's built in and made sure it was in place, everything was nice and tight. And then I put that uh, kind of clamping part over those bolts that are there, uh, put the nuts on and tightened them back down. So this way I have a sort of a monolithic, rigid, solid block of batteries. Uh, this tray also gives me a place to mount a cover down to so that I can have this all covered up and weatherproof when I'm all done. It also makes for having some really nice lift points. And here's the project that I'd like to use this battery pack in. This is a 1950s old school farm tractor. It's an international 300 utility. Uh, kind of the main issue here is that the legs of the engine hoist are actually um, spaced a hair wider than the spacing of the wheels on the tractor. So just getting the uh, engine hoist in there was a bit of a challenge. But once I did, I was able to position this battery uh, essentially under the hood of the tractor. This is where the upper part of the engine originally would have been along with the gas tank and a, a few other items in here. But once I actually got the battery in place, it looked like it was a pretty good fit. So here we go. This is one way to put a battery in a tractor. We've got three blocks of Chevy Volt cells in a straight line. Hopefully the cooling system should still work so that we can heat the battery in the winter for if we're using this tractor outdoors in the cold. And we still got all the space down here uh, for the electric drive motor. And then hopefully we should be able to fit that drive motor and a hydraulic forklift pump motor both down in this area. And then above it, have the battery, and then in this area over here, we would do the motor controller, charger, things like that. And we might still even have just a little bit of room above the battery here for a thing or two, or if we need a little bit more um, space down here, I think we can probably still get away with lifting the battery up a little bit. Anyways, here's uh, hoping that that can work for us. Another view this is from the uh, kind of more of the operator's angle or wide angle lens if that looks a little distorted to you. So we're reusing the, um, the tray that these cells were mounted on in the Chevy Volt and that's got some good mounting points. Uh, so we could weld up some sort of a framework that this would then set on and bolt to. And on this end, it's 16 inches wide, which is, looks like it's pretty much perfect right there. And in fact, the front of the tractor is actually a little wider. It's about 18 inches up here. So in the sheet metal hood should clear all that just fine. <laughs> 